Good afternoon. So, last night, yes, last night, as I was thinking of what to include in my speech for today, I was taken aback and brought to a reflection. I recall those five long years that I had to endure to reach this very present day. And now, I have an idea of what to share. The place where God calls you is where your deepest gladness and the world's hunger meet. I was not born with a very proverbial silver spoon in the mouth. So, getting into a premier university like CIT University was already a very great privilege. Well, not to mention that just a week after enrolling, my mother already wanted me to withdraw my enrollment because it would be more practical to enroll into a state university. But I stood firm. I wanted to become an engineer and I want to have the standard quality education for that matter. And so, I promised to look for scholarships that would support me all the way. And if I ever fail, then that's the time that I would voluntarily transfer. Prior to that in high school, I already took the examination for the USD scholarship, which I failed. So I applied for other scholarships. I tried GSI scholarships, scholarship, but I was not accepted. So a year already passed, and my scholarship for being the class valedictorian in high school already expired, so I depended on the academic discounts. It was second year summer, the very peak of my optimism, when I applied for the Aboites College Scholarship Program. I was able to proceed through the levels of screening process, but to my dismay, I was then again not accepted for the final stage. It was not until mid of first semester of my third year when I got accepted to the CITA scholarship. It was at least a year that I had to solely rely on my grades for academic discounts, and I am grateful that I was able to finally land a stable scholarship. So outside my struggles in finding a scholarship, although people already recognized me as someone who excels academically, little do they know that I was also struggling academically because I was very much worried about my financial status in college. I was in third year when I received a failing mark on my prelim exam, a score of 11 over 50 in third year. At the same time, I also got a 3.7 and 3.8 grades in my midterms. Imagine, I was in third year, I have no scholarship at that time, and I was on the verge of breaking down. And that was the lowest point of my academic journey. But today, I am awarded as the king of engineers. <laughs> Support. When I look back at it, when I was in third year, I never expected for me to come this far. I came from a very far province and I never expected to blend in well in a university in a city this vast, but I endured. Although I am awarded today as the king of engineers, this does not and will never define me. We should always remember that we are not and we should not be defined by our awards and achievements. We should be the ones giving meaning to them. In our pursuit for greater heights, we should always and also remember to give meaning to the awards we do not get. Our far-off dreams, our aspirations that seem unreachable, that need more act, will, and drive. These awards do not represent my intelligence or cognitive skills for that matter. This is only the tip of the iceberg of a long years of struggle in surmounting challenges and obstacles. So today, I am here as a representation, not of outstanding and excellent individuals, but as representation 
of students who are in a continuous battle of surviving college. Students who are compromising nights of sleep just to finish plates and study for examinations. <laughs> students who would resort to mongos just to save allowance for a thesis. Students who are still actively involved in organizations despite busy schedules. And students who would not take absences even with an impaired health. Furthermore, these awards show how strong and firm my support groups are, which I am very much grateful to my family, who has been with me since the beginning. My CETA Alumni Association family, especially my personal sponsor, scholarship sponsor, who are in America right now, Engineer and Mrs. Loy and Fe Mantilla. To our department chair, Engineer Basse, for always bringing out the best in me. To the faculty and staff of the Mechanical Engineering Department, especially to Engineer Patunob, Engineer Tano, Engineer Navarro, and others who have imparted their lifelong technical and life advice. To my classmates, especially to my research mates, Elier, Madeline, Paolo, and Johnny. To my mentors, whom I consider very dear, and friends in the Technology and Student Press, especially to Kriniko, who is free right now, Miller, Kuya Burke, Kuya Turks, Atiyo, and Binbin, for always being there for me in everything I do. And to the CIT University Elite Debate Society, especially to Attorney Birongoy. To all of you, from the depths of my heart, thank you very much. But on another note, it has always been my mantra in college to never focus solely on academics. Admit it or not, when we leave the portals of CIT University, our grades alone cannot be a sufficient weapon in the battlefield of the employment world. That is why I am very much grateful for the organizations that I had in my stay that molded and equipped me with the necessary skills to be more competent and prepared. To the Technology and Student Press, to the CIT University Elite Debate Society, the Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, and also, very dear to me, the Pearl Learning Program, I remain humbled for the experience and fun that I had. The mix of engagements and people that I've worked with in college placed me in a pedestal that is not easy, but worthy, and I always see myself growing. Finally, looking at all of you here in this gymnasium, I have come to a realis realization that it really does not matter how many times you have stumbled or how many times you fell down. It has always been a matter of bouncing back and coming back stronger. So to everyone who's feeling low and feels like giving up to those who will be taking later their exam in CC3, you should always remember how to rest but never to quit. Larry Winget wrote in, one, wrote in one of his books, only the people who are on the edge are the ones who made history. In summary, in conclusion, it has always been about the three Gs. Grit, your unyielding courage to face hardship. Guidance, the ones coming from your mentors and friends. And gratitude for all who had always had your back. To all of you here, I challenge you to always and always challenge yourselves. I want to be remembered as someone who has never bowed down to adversities, who did not conform to mediocrity. Do not worry about not being the best. Worry about not giving your best. And in giving your best, you should always remember this quote, and I leave this to you. Carry yourself in such a way that when people are sitting, you would be standing. And when they are standing, you will stand out. And when they stand out, you will be outstanding. And when they dare to be outstanding, you will be their standard. Thank you very much and congratulations to everyone.